man, he was mad at me on Saturday. He went and dug out one of the drawings I did in the last year or two, and he just wrote fat, 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 fat all over it. <laughs> fat dad. <laughs> man, kids tagging on your shit. Man, tells me I got a potato head. God damn. Well, I'm Jason. And I'm Jules. And we, we do in filmographies. filmographies. And we're in the midst of a brand new guy. Well, not the midst. midst. We're starting a new guy, right? This is the first episode for John Cazale. I guess I was hoping we'd start with The Godfather because I just finished it, but that's oh. fine. No, hey, no, man. No. It's all right. It'll give me some time to process it. Yeah. Yes, John Cazale. Cazale or Cazale? Oh, it's probably Cazale. I don't know. Uh, Johnny Cazale. Johnny Caslo. That's what we used to call him. He'd been dead for so long. Somebody actually suggested we do him. Really? Yeah, in some of the early announcements where I was like, hey, this is what we do. And they're like, we should do John Cazale. He's nice and short. Yeah. I was like, I don't know. Maybe someday. He's, He's not shut in the up. hat. We'll never do that. But here we are. Yeah. We needed somebody. We did. And I was like, hey, how about this? And you're like, yeah, I was thinking about that. Yeah. For the... For because we need to fill some space before a secret secret Christmas project. Yeah, we do a lot of complicated math. Yeah, <laughs> involving Google calendars, figuring out. Yeah, how can we shuffle astrology, just shit like that. And so we ended up with uh, John Cazale. We we're looking for an actor that had a uh, sort of um, a brief career. And boy, do he! But boy, is it notable. Yeah. What did he do? Six things? Five? No, how many? I mean, did he do five movies? Five movies. Yeah. And all the movies are big time. Yeah. Big time? Jules, big time? time. Yeah, pretty big time. Big time. And when he was doing... Deer, Hunter. He was dying of cancer, and he hit it, and then when the studio found out, they were like, we don't want him in the movie. They didn't want him in the movie because he had the big C? Mm Mm-hmm. And Meryl Streep was like, well, if you uh, fire him, I'm going to leave. And they were like, well, we need the Streep. We need the Streep stakes. Yeah. You know? Because these are the Streeps of fire. Mm-hmm. That's I'm a, the, the good, the pot, and the ugly had a Meryl Streep series. They're called Streeps of Fire. Oh. Way to go, the good, the pot, and the ugly. Yeah, way to go, guys and gals. I think it's just boys. Hmm. They will be boys. I think it's a dad, his son, and uh, one of their friends. So uh, what this results in and brings us to is we're going to do a double whampy. A double whamby? Yeah, double whamby. That's what you call it when you do two not movies. Yeah. His first credit which was um a short film called the american way and his only tv credit on nypd the american way is it like 61 62 something like that? 62 yeah yeah fucking way back yeah way back he got lots of hair he got a beard he losing that hair but he got a lot of it still mm-hmm yeah, he looks, you could tell he is young, but he also just looks exactly the same. Yeah, he looks as great. he does 10 years later. I don't know. He looks a little bit younger, stronger. Mm. To each their own. I mean, he's like 30 versus 40. I, fuck, I didn't capture when NYPD, when that came out. Shall I, shall I look? That episode. Why don't I have that? It's 30 minutes long. No, it, oh, that's why, because I'm in the wrong notes. I'm in the wrong notes, folks. It came out on December 3rd, 1968. Oh, wow. So five years later. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, I couldn't find any concrete conclusions uh-huh. in my very brief search while I was putting this together 35 minutes before I came over here. Yeah. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that um, Police Squad ripped off... The intro. The intro's great. I guess it's spoofing it, but they're not there's nothing funny about the police squad intro, right? No, I think they bring it back in the naked one of the naked guns, and then it's funny. Yeah, like bras and I don't know. Yeah, I think it like runs over a biker or some shit. But yeah, I mean it's a lot of zooming on buildings. Yeah, it's great. But um Yeah. It's this, not worth screenshotting anything, but it's still great. It is still great. And the show's kind of good yeah you know the unfortunately the quality is terrible i thought it was fine what do you mean the quality of the video yeah well it was like they took this off of a film reel and then uploaded it to like 240p on youtube i thought the short and the tv show looked pretty good wow i thought the tv show looked god awful oh the the second episode i watched was even worse it was like saturated those screenshots i sent you look good i didn't didn't i send you martin sheen faces maybe 
crisp. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it's just my Roku TV. You know how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> so The American Way, written by, directed by two dudes. The writer wrote another short that the director directed. The director's been in more things as an actor, I believe, than things he's directed. And didn't, I think, Cazelle had something to do with that second short, didn't he? Like he was director of photography Could or something. be. He was credited as something on this one that I can't remember now. Production assistant slash editor. Is it called The Box or something? It was, it it was, was brought the box, up in the yeah. comments of the short film. Mm-hmm. Do you need me to read the synopsis? Oh, yeah, yeah. I guess we prob- probably Jesus. should. What the fuck, Jules? I'm just, man, I'm all out of sorts today. The American Way, a merry beatnik prankster, John Cazale, attempts to blow up iconography that symbolizes the institutions that make up the identity of American society. Or some shit. That's what, why you think he's blowing all that stuff up, trying to? Mm-hmm. Just, I mean, it's apparently a comedy, but it's like they're just attacking the symbols of America. That's what's going on there? Well, because he's first seen trying to blow up, uh, is it Yankee Stadium? I think so. And that doesn't work. He's just got, like, one of them TNT boxes with the push plunger. Yep, but he's and like jumper cables on the stuff. Yeah. I don't think that's how it works. No, and later we come to find out that the box is just full of, like, I don't know, a sandwich bag and a ball or something. Yeah, silly things. Right. And so it doesn't blow up. And then we see a guy who's getting suited up by, like, a butler or something. And they're looking, they're, like, casting glances at one another sideways like mm, mm, you know and then it sounds like the guy maybe tears his pants or something and then ultimately the butler puts like a rocket helmet on him and the guy has a baseball glove he punches it like they do and then he runs out of the apartment and then we see john walking around with the plunger and he's trying to blow up a rack of mother's day cards yeah and again it doesn't blow up no so then the guy's back on the field some dudes run by with like a mattress or something, and then John tries to blow up apple pie. America. Uh, ultimately, he like tries to blow up a fire hydrant. But before that, there's like a bunch of a guy sitting on a bench. Yep, reading the paper. Yeah. Well, he he rips off he, first. He brings a, a, a briefcase. He opens the briefcase and pulls out the newspaper. Closes the briefcase and then throws it away. Takes the front page off of the newspaper and lights that on fire throws that away and then he starts to read it a lady sits down on his right another lady sits down on his left oh yeah a guy sits down by the first lady they start necking um another guy another lady and all of a sudden it's just like a dog pile orgy tm everybody fooling around surrounding him so Mm -hmm. many of them and he's just reading the paper eventually there's so many that he's pushed to the ground and they're just on top of him as he's reading the paper flummoxed so then john eventually blows up a fire hydrant and it's i don't know where they got this from but a tidal wave hits um new york yeah i wonder if that was like a miniature set and then the the empire state building collapses upon itself and john's just floating in now the ocean or whatever and he's excited he is he did it he did it hey Good for you, guy. Yeah, this feels like a beatnik Maynard G. Krabs take on like Monty Python. Yeah, bring up fucking Dobie Gillis. Yeah, I had to stop and go. I don't really remember this, but yes. Yeah, but you know the dope. Dobie wants a gal with dreamy. Dobie wants a gal with dreamy. Well, I don't. That's why I don't remember. Is fucking. Uh, I mean, I I vaguely remember it being on Nick at Night. Gilligan's but never Island. Actually watching it. With that was his, his what, what is that the hair a soul patch yeah yeah mm-hmm. he's a beatnik yeah is he stupid is he uh, a real dumb asshole it feels like it was like a parker lewis precursor okay just a hip cool guy you know hip cool out of control mm, Dobie gillis can't lose or whatever how come in in my headphones you sound clear as day yeah but then to me i feel like i sound muffled how do i sound to you you sound great oh i wonder if that's just something okay. i sound great too yeah. Okay. It's like a, just a real, you know. Great. Melange of great sounding guys. All right, man. Two <laughs> two great sounding guys yeah. sitting in the basement. Sitting in the basement. Real guy guys. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, talking about the American way. Exactly. Well, that sure was 10 minutes of short film. Yeah, I watched it just watching the cats in the yard. 
Yeah. Standing there looking upon all of my creations. I watched the short film and the TV show as I waited for Max to go to sleep. I laid in my bed with one headphone in and watched them. Yeah, we watched uh, the TV show, I want to say Friday night. And, you know, in the up next... I was just kind of looking around. I'm like, this show's actually not that bad. I mean, yeah, I, I was surprised and into it. It was I'd, not as, I don't know, man. It was like a good procedural. It wasn't full of fluff. It seemed like they really were working that case, and it was interesting. Yeah, so I guess let's jump into it, because yeah, I'll make some comments about the show beyond this episode. Okay, uh, are we, we, we're done with the American way? I mean, that's, yeah, I mean, it, right? I mean, what it, do you want to, I guess we got to rate it. Yeah. Um, John Cazale seems like he's having a good time yeah he seems fun he's humorous it didn't really make me laugh but he had a good vibe to him great looks great in the beard yep uh he has on sandals that are reminiscent of like greek or roman time sandals oh yeah i did look at his feet oh weird right well yeah because he, he looked i don't know i'm always interested in the clothes people used to wear because mm-hmm. like he looked pretty much like a regular dude yeah and he's wearing those stupid ass sandals yeah and we didn't get much um atmosphere of the city at of that time or anything like we do a little bit in nypd yeah this one you're just getting like a storefront here or something mm-hmm. there. it looks great yeah i mean it's that a pretty black well and made doing a wonders for it there's some silly sound effects here and there but i'd give john a five you know not really much going on but strong presence man i would give him a six i really he has such a whimsical feel to him i, I liked him in this hmm. he, i mean he's you don't get many close-ups of him. It's mostly side shots and from behind and far away. But no dialogue. His energy is great. Yeah. Six. Awesome. The what movie? do you think? I or like the movie. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's so short. I mm-hmm. think it's kind of it's beautiful but dumb. Yeah, it's dumb, but it's better than Arena Brains. Oh my god, by a million! <laughs> it's better than Sleeping Beauties as well. But that True. was a low quality situation. True that. Um. I would give it a six also. Yeah, I'll give it a six. Like, it's almost pretty good. I, it's just, it's really impressive looking. Mm-hmm. It's a really well-made short. As far as I know, it's not one that, you know, people often look back on or talk about. No, I don't think anybody says shit about this. I think it, yeah, I think it's a solid short. Are we in the, we're in the club now? We are. Talking about this? I was even thinking about ripping a copy just to have it. Did you, yeah, rip it out of your ass. Did you <laughs> give it a six? What did you give it? Yeah, I gave it a six. All right. So okay. then we NYPD bl- Blue? Is that what it's called? NYPD Blue? No, 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 no. You said it was called Police Story? Yes. Okay. It's uh, Picket Fences. I told you, everybody's in Picket Fences. Everybody's in this show, apparently. That's true. Yeah, I mean, there's two notable actors in this episode alone. Yeah. NYPD. This episode is called The Peep Freak. Yeah. Do you want me to do the synopsis? Yeah, yeah, I wrote it for you okay 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 nypd the peep freak detectives johnny corso frank converse creator of the shoe and jeff ward robert hooks creator of the hook are in pursuit of a murder suspect in the latest case of the week after two women that live in the same building of the victims say there is a freak peeper in the building across the street corso and ward begin to turn their investigative gaze towards fred Janney, martin sheen but there's something fishy going on with the building super Tom Andrews, John Cazale, that might warrant even more investigation. Warrant? Mm-hmm. Investigation? Mm-hmm. NYPD. Judicate. Uh, dun dun. Yeah. So this is the kind of shit that I like. I have a bizarre affinity for New York City 1970s, 1980s. Well, I'd love to go there. Well, the 60s, too. 60s Mm. is like uh, when you get that little bleed over of the old like fedoras and overcoats before it quite gets to the hippie zone. I mean, you can make an argument for a lot of periods. I don't know. Something about the 70s, the porno theaters and the pimps and uh, all the jive and, uh, (laughs) you know, uh, the remnants of the jazz age. Sure. Right. Um, seeing how wide the sidewalks are and how very little um, height they have above the street and how wide the streets are. There's no lines. There's no <laughs> anything. It's just, where's the crosswalk? Where's the center line? None of that shit seems to be there. When did it start to swell up with people? I mean, it always sort of did, but I, yeah, I, I, I don't know. You when know. they started creeping out from underground, the, the doppelgangers mm-hmm. got out of the sewer 
And that's when the population exploded. Could be. I don't can't remember the names of anything from that stupid movie. Us? Yeah. Yeah. Where, where, where did that take place? The Whispers. Because that's just, it's everywhere, right? It's not just underneath where. Yeah, like, apparently there's a doppelganger for every person And on they the just planet, stand right? there and like m- m- brain dead mimic what their other is doing all the time, right? I don't know, man. I turned it off. I didn't make it super far. I made it like a half hour. Could have sworn once they go, once somebody goes down there, yeah, it's like a uh, guy hitting on a girl. Uh, and she's really? Just like, uh, and they're like milling around in this mall type environment. It's all like back hallways and corridors. Oh. But it, it just appears, yeah, that they're like mimicking what's going on, but not intelligently. It's <laughs> silly, but. So, so yeah, so basically the woman's dead immediately, and uh, Corvo and Hooks? I think so. Um, they're on the case. To me, cementing the fact that they are homicide detectives, would you say? Are they not? I would assume they are, correct? Yeah. We'll get back to that. So, they start interviewing two ladies. Uh, one's a dancer. She's got a really non-existent chin. She's looking really cute, though, she's, when she was doing her moves before she entered that door. As soon, like, soon as she turned around, I said, uh, ooh. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. But the other lady, she, I thought for a split second, I was like, oh, shit, it's uh, Bette Midler. What? But then, and the, it's not. Are you thinking of... The blonde, who's like, I'm moving. Barbara Streisand, not Bette Midler? No, I think I was... They're going to bet. Okay. But, so they're like, hey, what do you know about this dead lady? And we don't know her. We just live in the building. What is this? What is this? What is this? He goes, well, just, oh, God, peppermint. Yeah. Do you not <laughs> like peppermint? I love it. I hate it, but I, whatever, no, there's I hate one... everything about all of these things, so I'm just going to drink it no matter what. Why don't you have one of these creamy, creamy rum chattas? <laughs> you don't like those? I have not wanted to eat anything, drink anything creamy. I'll drink one of those. It's very semen-y. Should I do two of them? No, you have a beer. Do you want coconut? Do you want Caribbean rum with real dairy cream, natural and artificial flavors, or just coconut cream? Mm, give me the first one. It seems Ooh. heavier than this one. Oh, no. <laughs> it's <gonna laughs> rotten up the house. And so they're like, hey, what do you know about this lady? And they're like, I mean, you know, I see her. You know, there's a peeper, FYI. Do you hear? There's a peeper in the neighborhood. I always see him over there. He's all fidgeting. He's got binox. Rubbing his legs. I know what I know what those hands are doing. Well, she goes, he's always hiding behind the curtains, but I see him. Well, how do you, what, are you peeping? The fuck you doing? Where? Oh, right there. I don't know. It sounds like he does it often enough that you'd eventually notice it, right? If you're looking out the window. Does that smell good? I think I might have this with my cereal. Does it smell like milk? No, you know what it smells like? The banana Kit Kats. Interesting. All right, well. Mail us in your exotic Kit Kats. Mm-hmm. And liquor. <laughs> so that, so he goes, so they're like, okay, well, in the 60s, going into the 70s, we, we don't like peepers. So we're going to go take care of that. We got a real problem with sexual degeneracy. <laughs> yep. Queers, peepers. Flashers. Same thing. I think they're thinking that's the same thing. Yeah. You're right. Some sort of degenerate. Right. Some sex deviant. And so they go over there and it's Martin Sheen. Probably getting fucked in the ass while he's looking at you. <laughs> it's Martin Sheen. And I, I want to say this was right around his stint on Columbo, but I didn't look in to see if it was actually before. Oh, God. Are you not recording? Uh, <laughs> good one, bro. You got me very good. Acting. <laughs> All this acting. Oh. <laughs> Let's shoot this fucker. Oh, yeah. I didn't even unlock it. Yet. Can you? Unlock it? You have enough skill points? <laughs> mm. I was going to make some sort of joke about wearing a chastity cage. Oh, that is thick. Gross. Fuck, dude. <laughs> He's drizzling it, drizzling the leftovers into his mouth. Yeah. That actually Ooh. wasn't too bad. It kind of was like that moonshine. Oh, really? But more cinnamon than banana. Well, what is my problem that this disgusts me, but that wow. jug of pudding is I would good. jerk off with that. No, really? <laughs> it probably doesn't feel too good. Make my penis nim. So so they're like, okay, peeper Martin Sheen, what are you doing? You peeping? No, I ain't, I ain't peeping. I ain't, I ain't no fucking peeper. Get the fuck out of here. I'm going to fight you both. I'm four feet tall. He gets so mad. Is he real tiny? He's a very small man, yeah. Dude, the person who uploaded this was like, 
stars Martin Sheen before he became a social justice asshole. Is he? I mean, he... <laughs> I thought he was just doing, like, prescription apps or something. If you're looking for a better price for your prescriptions, we can save you hundreds a month with single care. He, he, I mean, he does some social do- justice stuff, but, like, just that statement makes you sound like an asshole. Yeah. He's fucking Martin Sheen before he started trying to help the poor mm-hmm. and get better schools in bad districts. How fucking dare he? Fucking scumbag. Go back to acting as a peep freak. Yeah. What you're good at. God, you were handsome back then. <laughs> Excuse me. I gotta be alone. And and so No, no, you, you don't got you don't gotta be. Uh, that no. was that guy. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, a callback. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> so like what about these binoculars? So, like, I, I don't know. Uh, get out of here. I like the moon. What if everyone in the world who disappeared just teleported to the moon? <laughs> 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 So they're like, hey, chief, and their chief's just like... Sounds like a peep freak. That guy's been around. Obviously, he's the culprit. Well, I mean, we don't want to cast any... Fuck that! Guy's peeping. Yeah, this guy's like uh, trying to look at people and maybe masturbating. What do we got to do to railroad him? Killer. They're like, well, we want to do it by the book, sir. Well, fuck that. So I sit on him. Really, I want around-the-clock police presence. You sit on him. You tickle him. Right. Get the truth. Fought on him, too. (laughs) <laughs> you know this whole time we're seeing john Cazale because he's the super sit on his belly and fart right there and see if that <laughs> tickles him he's wearing a jumpsuit a boiler suit with a bow tie the first time we see him yeah and he is so much less hair than the last time we saw him yeah he's hey what do you know about the guy up in oh guy up there whoa boy gosh you know he's got a real creep look to him yeah hey i don't know about that guy up there he's now he's no good but it was it was what he's doing. He's so angry. Yep. And the ladies are they're like, we're leaving, you know. And so they're trying to get Martin Sheen. Uh, he starts following Corvo right when he leaves the police station. And this is where we get to see like New York as he's walking down the street. And he's like 10, 12 feet behind him. Yeah, that's how you tail people. On a street wider than your room. With no other people? Wider than your your mom's. <laughs> oh, man, I got hiccups. The podcast. Oh, Jesus. The bane of the podcast. He's dead. <laughs> Welcome to the Soda Review Podcast. <laughs> and, and so they're like, hey, what are you following me for, Martin Sheen? Ah, I got to talk to you. I'm not the guy. I swear to God. All right. Well, tell me about it. I got a real problem. I got a, I got a, a, a social disease that they, I see a psychiatrist for. And yeah, my friend's over there right now talking to her. And she's like, oh, I can't tell you anything because he is my client. As long as Mr. Jenny remains in my care. I would not betray the confidence of my client. And so, you know, nothing really comes from this. Now, John runs into one of the ladies and she's like, oh, I'm moving, John. I can't be here. Shit's going nuts. There's a peeper up there. Oh, wait a minute. You're telling me there's a peeper in one of my buildings? So he is now, because John Cazale's the murderer. Uh, what happened was the lady that got killed, she had a lot of boyfriends and Martin Sheen, when forced to do a lineup, pinpointed one of them, but he says, the only reason I know him is because I've seen him go there all the time, but he wasn't there that night cause, or that I know of cause I wasn't peeping. I was trying to really get a, be a good boy, you know? I like that. Yeah. And so he goes, anyways, even if I fingered this guy and you wanted to railroad him, it's going to come out that I'm a peeper and that's going to throw your whole case out the window. And it's going to make me look bad. Because uh, I ain't going to stop peeping, bro. No, fuck. I'll, I'll try, but fuck. These peepers be peeping. They be peeping. Jeepers creepers, you know? Yep. So he's like, ah, you're right. So he's like, well, I'm going to go home. So John Casale now realizes that there is a peeper. He was trying to get with the girl who got killed because she had all these boyfriends, but she didn't want to be with him because nah. he's a dirty boiler man. <laughs> and so he kills her. Yeah. But now he's afraid that Martin Sheen saw him because he's a peeper. Yeah. So he gets the jump on Martin and they're fighting, strangling, knocking over stuff. And the cop, Corvo, he's like, well, I better go check on Martin Sheen, even though he just left because my chief told me to put pressure on him and it's only been five minutes. And so he gets there. I, you know, I was just thinking maybe we could peep together. Mm-hmm. Like, do you maybe teach me what this is all about? Some good old fashioned peeping and sword fighting. Do we jack each other off while we're looking? Yes. One, your eye goes on one binocular side and mine goes on the other. Yep. And together we see all the ladies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, they're fighting for their lives. And Corvo 
is about to break in, and uh, John Cazale uh, he freaks out and he runs up the fire escape. Yeah. And the other cop is down there, hooks, and he goes, "Hey, Corvo!" Hey, and he goes, ah, and they run up, and they're chasing him, and and hooks grabs two plain clothes and runs up, and now John Cazale is just really giving it to H- Corvo, just really hammering on his midsection. You didn't think you wouldn't think he'd be a good fighter. He doesn't look like a good fighter. Well, he's so small, he's just like real close to you. He's just punching you, you know. Maybe everybody was in the big war, so they're all oh yeah strong now, and so the fight. By the 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 sheer power of John Cazale's right hook, both him and Corvo are like blasted apart, and, <laughs> and John Cazale almost falls over the edge. But Corvo runs up and grabs him, and and then, miraculously, there's a plain clothes cop right there who also grabs him, played by Raul Julia. No, yes, shut the fuck up. Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. Are you fucking with me? You didn't say I'm there was absolute- three. Big well, there's only two. John Cazale doesn't count. Because, oh. of course, we're watching it because of him. Yeah. Fucking Raul Julia, man. I did not notice that. Yeah, and you'll get a good screenshot of him, too, because it's quite evident once you actually see him. I am embarrassed. I didn't know until I was looking at the episode. And so John Cazale uh, assumedly goes to jail. I-, I did it. It's not law and order, so we don't get to see any of the courtroom shit. So what, I still don't get any pussy? I gotta go to jail? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Like I said, I ended up checking out another episode. Yeah. It was called The Candyman. Is and James Earl Jones the Candyman? He is. I, yes, it's me, the Candyman. I can't do it. You can do his voice. Yes, it's me, the Candyman. I don't know. But the weird part is, there's a store. A guy is digging through a barrel of beans. Candy? Dry beans. Candy beans? No, dry beans. They just keep him in an open barrel. Dried jelly beans? And he pulls out a big wad of money. Ooh. Right? And Bean then he, money? Yeah. And then he grabs a pole that has been strung through the handles of the front door, and he smacks the counter, and the cash register opens up. And then he smashes the front window. He's already in the store. Presumably, he got in just fine. And he found the money in the barrel, so what do you need the cash register for? I don't know. So he smashes the window to get out. It's like, well, you probably could have just left, assuming through the back door that she seemed to come in through. Instead, he smashes the door. And Corvo and Hooks show up to investigate. A robbery? Okay. Okay, I see what you're saying. <laughs> I turn to Callie. I'm like, aren't these guys like murder detectives? Well, maybe they're just detectives and they cover murders and like well, mysterious if crimes. Well, there's nothing mysterious about a store being robbed. It's mis- Who did it? It's the mysterious Well, the part. guy goes, oh, I, I put the money in the beans because I figure who's going to look in the beans? Well, who, who else knows you put the money in the beans? Uh, no, obviously nobody. James Earl Jones. I didn't spill the beans. Oh, yeah. uh, no. So then, yeah, it turns out that there's a collective of junkies that took over a brownstone and they're, it's not a shooting gallery. Like the brownstone by Stevens Community that they took over? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Except this was an abandoned building. Oh, that one still got people renting there. Yeah, and they're and this guy's breaking holes in walls and living in the walls and shit. At the Stevens Community yeah. one? Yeah, rubbing their feces on stuff. Uh-huh. We, went, we went into detail on it and I cut it all off. Oh, that's up. right. And, and But, so they're just living, or ex-junkies living in this building, trying to get their shit together. You know, and then like the store guy, he gives them groceries when it's like old or expired or about to go bad or whatever. Hey, here's a box full of bread or whatever. Cheaper than building jails. Uh, so, uh, uh, did you say a box of bread? Yeah. A box? Yeah. When does bread come in the box? Well, he puts the bread in the box. Oh. It comes in a bag, but he's got so many left because nobody buys it because he doesn't use paper bags. So how the fuck are you supposed to carry a, bro- a loaf of bread sticking out of a paper bag if the guy only has plastic bags. Okay, okay. So nobody okay, buys the fucking right. bread. Yeah, okay. And, you know, I didn't watch it because it's a two-parter, but um, John Lehane, John Le- the, the, the mm, is in there too. <laughs> He's a well-recognizable actor. You probably would have seen from something. Well, was it good? You didn't watch it all. I was- didn't. I watched the first episode and Cal was like, I'm going to go to bed. And I was like, yeah, you probably should. And uh, how was James Earl Jones? Young. Really smooth, shaved head. Yeah, I've seen that. Um, and fit. Oh. You know? And, like, there's some white, tough nicks that fuck with them, and they get into a fight, and the police are going to press charges against the kids, and then James Earl Jones is like, no, 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 let him go. You know? No harm, no foul. And the parents are like, oh, my God, they are good men. Who is James Earl Jones in this? Candyman. The leader of the junkies? Yeah. The ex-junkies? He's an ex-junkie who's the 
president of this thing or whatever. I Heroin? Well, it's a rehab. So he's like running it, you know. But I don't know. It's weird. They're all heroin people? They are all heroin junkies getting their lives back together. Okay. So it's like you clean the toilets and you do all this shit and then you graduate to the next tier. And it's like, you know, um, NA yeah. mixed with like a halfway house. Clean the toilets. Good mixed for you. with like a hippie thing. Yeah. First you clean the toilet and then you clean your hot. So it just seems like if there was just some store robbery, the cop would take the details and then. If something happened to break and we found the suspects, we probably still wouldn't be able to return the money that was stolen. So fuck off. It's New York, dickhead. Oh, just when you was being so nice to it. You got any more trivia about John Cazale? Not for any of these things. No? Although, except, although, except, although, except. Fredo is short for Freddy. Uh, the estimated budget for the American Way was $5,500. Oh, wow. Back in 1962. Mm-hmm. A majority of that was probably spent on the film and the equipment, I would imagine. That's so much money. Mm-hmm. So there it is. NYPD. What do you give him? Cazelle? Uh, I mean, I don't, he's a good proto creep in there. Mm-hmm. He, he's got a good vibe in things. Uh, he's like six. He's, he's good. He's good as that guy. He's a real creep. You kind of know immediately. You're like, I mean, maybe Martin Sheen did it, but uh, I think it was fucking old creepy over here. Yeah, I think Martin Sheen was laying on laying it on a little thick. He's so angry. His yeah. his his rage bouts. They say it's part of his problem. What is he like? Uh, is he a paranoid? I don't remember what she said. He's a severely neurotic personality with paranoid tendencies, meaning he had a potential for violent behavior, especially against women. He sniffs panties. That's all I know. What did they show him doing that? Mm-hmm. Oh, in the bonus scene. Oh. So I give John a six as well. He's there. He's, you know, Fredo. I don't know. I mean, I would say the show is kind of almost a seven. Like, if you take into account when it was made, how, I mean. It's pretty tight. I just really expected it to be like 24 minutes of fluff. Like, just total bullshit. I'm like, no, we're actually running down the case. Mm-hmm. It's very much a cop show. It's it's almost like all these hour long cop shows should be ashamed of themselves because NYPD didn't twenty four minutes. Yeah, it's not like super gritty or, or anything, but you could feel that sixties vibe kind of permeating a little bit throughout it. I mean, he chokes the fuck out of Sheen too. I mean, there's like the music is endless in this show. It just jumps from like beatnik bop to fucking hardcore jazz to a little. There's like tablas in the Candyman episode, I think. It's like, Jesus Christ. It's just like music, 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 music. You know, they only needed one song for the show. They could have played it the whole time. They didn't even need music. They could have just made it like a sound. Something, I don't know, like... Jung, jung, you know? I don't know. Something. Yeah. Play with it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So that's the first uh, run of John Cazale credits. Yeah, I feel bad. Like, this isn't even an episode. I, you know. All right. Yeah. And he dated Meryl Streep. Yeah. They which, were madly in love. Good for him. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. You, you like you like that episode? We got more coming for you. Next week. Next week, The Godfather. My natural instincts are, why even cover it? Everybody's covered it. What's the fucking point? And my other uh, part of my brain says, well, those are the episodes people will tune into. (laughs) They (laughs) would like to hear somebody talk about The Godfather. Yep. We'll do that next week. Yeah, we'll do that. In the interim, go ahead and head over to Facebook, Reddit, YouTube, Instagram. We do them filmographies. Email us at we do them filmographies at gmail.com. Tweet, tweet. Jules, yep. how do they tweet at us? Do filmographies. That is the move. Yeah. Go ahead and give us a call at 763-634-1897. 763-634-1897. Let's find out. I, I called it yesterday to make sure we didn't lose it again. 763-634-1897. 763-634-1897. We doing filmographies, podcast, one actor, 10 films a run. Yeah. We are also a part of the Now Playing Network. Hell yeah. We sure fucking are. Check that shit out. Nowplayingnetwork.net. God damn it. That's the address, Julian. Mm -hmm. You go there, 
you listen to a podcast. There's a lot of them. There's a decent amount. One for every day of the week. We're down the page a little ways. Yeah. Towards the end. Right. We're going to climb up. Yeah. And like, listen to ours first. Yeah. And then, you know, listen to one other one. And then maybe next week after you listen to ours again, maybe pick a different one over there to listen to. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. You Why know? don't you find out what's now playing? Yeah. At that network. At nowplaynetwork.net. Hell yeah. All right. Bye.